still love that last line. Um, our next poet contributor to read, um, we're ex exceptionally happy that she can join us today. We've been trying to get you to come out to be a part of a reading since we started this. Um, so we're really happy to welcome Joan Massa to the mic. So uh, I just want to say I, I do teach here at Writer House, but very rarely. And I'll be teaching The Secrets of Writing Every Day on October 12th, which is a Saturday, two weeks away, from 1 to 4. And I've been writing a poem every day for nearly eight years. So I'll tell you how I do it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read three poems. The first one is from Lingering in the Margins, and the other two were published elsewhere. And the first one... I wrote right after Anthony Scaramucci was kicked off the administration. Cafoons. They've made it to the White House, threaten like thugs anyone who could be a leaker, call verbatim reports fake news. They take their foul mouths to microphones, then blast reporters for transcribing their words accurately quoting sentences with four different four-letter words ending in CK. I think of my Sicilian ancestors who tried so hard to rise above their peasant roots to ensure all their descendants would own a house, become educated, and wouldn't have to sweat to make a living laying bricks or digging in the dirt. The street kids who skipped school were punks, goons, and bozos. Without manners, eloquence, or respect for elders, they were kafoons. Worse than hoodlums and gangsters, lowest of the lowlifes, more contemptible than common mafiosi wannabes, without their put-on flair. Now these bullies dare speak for our country in words that can't be repeated on the air. <clears throat> Unpacked box. I look in my desk and jewelry box for safety pins. Remember them in the middle drawer of the sewing cabinet left behind in the last house. No sewing room in this one. A cardboard box, jumbled contents of those drawers. Spools of silk thread, pastel ribbons for a project never started, packets of needles folded in black paper from mother's millinery days. I wish she could see me here, I say aloud, habit of long solitude. Mother is dead 20 years. A roll of lace, hand-tatted, but by whom? I didn't make that, Mother says, snatches it from my hands. Someone spent hours of her life on this. I leap backward, ready to run. Mother says, can't you make me a little coffee? Oh, put some lipstick on. You look like you're dead. <laughs> <clears throat> this last one is Darwin and Da Vinci. Somewhere in the multiverse, somewhere past a black hole, I turn right at a silver asteroid and coast into the strings of a cosmic suburbia to find a house that looks like mine. I serve dinner to J Charles and Leonardo, who laugh when they see each other looking glass faces and beards, mirror minds bubbling with curiosity. This space-time pocket of dreams and inventions is a reverse Tower of Babel. We speak our native languages in idiom and references of our time, fully understand without translation. I make pasta primavera because even in this small in this small corner of the vast cosmos, Leonardo is a vegetarian. 
and Charles still skittish about his digestion. I set up a slideshow of fossils on mountains and let them take it from there. When we move to the living room for tea, they discover bound editions of their notebooks and drawings on the coffee table amid tomes of their art and science. Both left-handed, they delight in mutual quirks and interests, surprised to meet five centuries after Leonardo's death. I tell them a bit about the Mars rover, Voyager, Watson, and Crick, but mostly I'm quiet to listen to them talk about their drawings. Oh yes, I tell them, people fly in planes and helicopters. The evidence of evolution makes it fact. In the bathroom, the two men take turns flushing to watch the tank empty and fill. Thank you. Thank you.